Today we eat grandma's school lunch. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Link, I just have to ask you, would you happen to be wearing one of the many pieces available in our new line, Forest and Farm, available at mythical.store? Well, Red, I am so glad that you asked me that because yes, I actually am wearing this sleek button-up featuring miniature horses. Ooh, your favorite animal. All over it. You know what, and I just happen to be wearing uh, the wood shirt from the Forest and Farm collection. I did notice that. I really like wood, wow. it's wood grain. Wood I also grain. have a wood hat. <laughs> I also have wood socks. Would you like to see I my, would. my miniature horse hat? Oh, and wow. My miniature horsey socks. You don't have to wear it all together, but you could. Yes, this is the Forest and Farm collection available at mythical.store. <laughs> Button up with us, y'all. But enough about our shirts. Let's talk about school lunch, okay? Yes. Specifically, how school lunches have changed over the decades. And let's not just talk about them, let's play a game where we guess what decade different school lunches come from. It's time for Year Eye with Two Straight Guys, School Lunch Edition. Okay, here's how it works. In each round, we're gonna be giving a school lunch that was actually served during a particular decade. We are going to sample said mm. lunch. I'm hungry. And then we're gonna indicate our guess as to what decade it was served in by shuffleboarding the actual lunch on the mythical shuffleboard court. And uh, Mythical Lunch Lady Chase will be assisting us. Hello, Mythical Lunch Lady Chase. Did you just burp internally? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> she works with lunch. Okay, so uh, Lunch Lady Chase will be measuring our distance, of course, from our lunch, wherever it lands, to the correct decade, whoever's closest wins. And at the end, whoever wins gets to enjoy a nice piece of square school lunch pizza. And then the loser has to write I will learn lunch better 100 times on a chalkboard. Let's shuffle. We appear to have some sort of meat slab yet to be identified. Some fruit cocktail, perhaps? Yes, that's what we called that growing up. It had um, the, the shrivelly grapes in it. Mm-hmm, I love some shrivelly grapes. That is a fried Ooh. pork chop. Fried pork chop? We cannot lift our drinks off of our trays because they're glued down. I, now, I like this, this little end part of the fried pork chop. Mm. Don't eat it all, Link, because no. you're gonna need it to weight down your tray. But because my Aunt Vicky used to be a school lunch lady, oh, yeah, I remember. you should go first. <laughs> right, because going second gives you the advantage. Okay, I see how this is played. Being very ginger here. There is no ginger on my plate, though. Grab your stick. Do you have an idea what decade this is uh, from? I believe that these like two canned things with some fried pork chop. We're definitely talking about 1950 or earlier. We've added some shuffleboard sand on this, so it's yeah. a little bit slicker. So it might be difficult to get it to stop. I'm just trying to get it to stop somewhere in the top because I'm going for like 1920 or 30. Oh, you overshot it. Okay, landed safely in 1940. Um, your answer's wrong, but you got closer than you thought to the correct answer, which I believe to be 1980. This is 80s stuff, man. I ate all of this stuff as a child. Okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna knock your tray into the moat of cream corn, <laughs> and I'm gonna land softly and safely, squarely on 1980. Oh! Wow! Boom! It's amazing that you did what you intended to. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's, I want to celebrate for you. Do it. Guys, things are about to get even more amazing. You just ate a veal cutlet with chicken noodle soup, a fruit cup, and a glass of lemonade. This was a popular school lunch in the 1980s. <laughs> okay, I quit. I quit. I All didn't right. want your streak to get ruined. I'll keep playing. Okay, we've got something that's not real eye-catching. No. Is what? that a, it's just a lettuce sandwich? <laughs> oh, no, there's, no, yeah, it's just lettuce. No, there's a, some, something, maybe mayonnaise? Only one way to find out, you just gotta take a bite, I guess. And I don't know what this death soup is. There's peas. And a weird green bean gel gelatinous thing. Is, this, is there crab in that? I don't know. I'm letting you say that. that. Hold on. That's that's clam chowder. Yeah. And this is 
This is green. good though. This is cream green beans. Um, okay, what we're gonna do, because there's such an advantage to going second, whoever's losing at the time will go second. So Link, um, you go first this time. Lettuce sandwich, man. These must have been desperate times. Yep, that's what I'm thinking. Um, the 90s. <laughs> if I knew something about history and could correlate that to desperate times, then I would be able to formulate an answer. But okay. since I don't know about that stuff. Aim for the 90s. Aim for the middle of the board. Um, I'm just, I, I'm feeling 1920. And okay. I, wanna, I wanna be at the tip of the spear so that no matter where you go, you gotta move me out of the way. Okay, do it. Oh, it's too hard, too hard, way too hard. <laughs> what happened? Uh, yeah, yeah. Man, I, I now, lost my game. Hold on, you strategically spilled some clam chowder on the board though. That stays. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have to go to the side then. I'm gonna come over here. Um, so definitely uh, desperate times. So we're, it's gotta be the tens, the twenties, or the thirties, right? It can't be after that. I'm just gonna try to get it to land at the top of the triangle because it's very difficult to get it to stop where you want. Okay. You just kissed 1910. 1910. Just the tip. <laughs> you just ate a lettuce sandwich with oyster soup and creamed asparagus, Oy. a meal that was actually served in schools in the 1920s. Oh! Again, I was right, but I overshot my mark so far. I win that round. Wow, we've got a series of unidentifiable things. They're, those are tomatoes, I do know that. This looks like cornbread with like a, like a beanie weenie or a... It's a vine of sausage in there, man. Yep. That's a vine of sausage. Mm. Something my granddad would eat only when fishing. Ugh. Tomatoes. A jello salad. I'd call that ambrosia, but I could be wrong. That's not gonna make it taste any better. Ugh. Okay. Oh my gosh. We're tied, so we'll just alternate. I'll go first, you go second. Coconutty. Um, I think that this type of stuff, like the weird jello ambrosia situation, uh -huh. started to get popular uh, in the 50s. Because I remember we played a game and there was a bunch of jello-y things that from the 50s, from that 50s cookbook. So I'm going for 1950. Too much, too much, too, too much, stop, too much, stop, too much. stop, stop. See, it's not, it's not easy to stay on this board. No, it's not. I'm thinking 1950s because <laughs> all the things that you already said. Well, all you have to do is go on the left side of the board and just contact my tray and you will win. For the record, I do think the correct answer is 1950 as okay. well. Don't screw it up. Go! Little finesse shot. Okay, guys, that was a, how do you pronounce the sausage uh, or when you were children? Well, we said Vienna. Some people say Vienna. Viener. I, I thought, yeah, vi there was an R then. Viener. Sausage shortcake served with a pork mm. and apple salad, tomato wedges, and an orange coconut custard with cottage cheese. This was an actual school lunch in the 1950s. Yep. Boom! I pull ahead. So we've got... Milk, what appears to be what I would call beefaroni um, with onions, green beans, bread with butter, and some sort of cake. Mm. Cake looks good. This is the first one that excites me a little bit. Peanut butter cake! Oh, Woo! Man. That is really good cake. My Nana makes really a good mean cake. peanut butter cake. It's almost as almost good as, as good. Nana's. Uh-huh. Hold on, did you get in touch with Nana? <laughs> yeah, she called me. Nana will mail me a pound cake. She mails in a box of pound cake she, all the time. She mails me cakes too. Okay, so um, I'm you're, winning. You're, you're in the lead, so you're gonna go first. Okay. <sighs> I'm just gonna sit over here and enjoy this Nana's cake. This is difficult. Um, these are kind of these are ubiquitous foods. Mm -hmm. Actually, the only thing that's distinct is the peanut butter cake, which I think is more of a modern dessert invention. Really? Interesting. Yeah. This is not something from the 40s or earlier. I actually think this is 1990. Wow, Link. Yeah. Of course, that's really close to the cream corn <laughs> <note>. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta be really delicate in 1990. So, again, Knowing I'm coming right after you. I gotta play the game though. So even though 90 is my answer, I'm gonna try to go well short of that. Okay. Well short of that. 
Hey, you know what? That's a really strategic play because what are the chances that I hit you and knock you all the way? I mean, this you might have just done something unintentionally really, really incredible. All right, Rick, knock me to the 90s, buddy. So I have a dis I have a choice here because I actually think that, okay, my reasoning on this is that you remember coming over to my house in the 80s and eating pasta with, we had milk all the time. You did. We already know the 80s had been guests, so that was either something that had already been established in the 70s or it carried into the 90s. So I think we're in the 70s or the 90s. If I hit you, I run the risk of knocking you closer to the answer and me leaving myself at the top of the pyramid. So I'm gonna do- are you, Is this all leading up to you forfeiting? I don't, <laughs> what are you I'm getting I'm gonna at? do the sneaky slide around you. Sneaky slide, you're gonna put spin on the tray. No, I'm just gonna try to get past you without actually coming in contact with you, which is not easy because these things, they're not evenly balanced. Oh, this is tough, this is tough, this is tough. Good luck with that. I have no confidence. I've got a lot of confidence. Sneaky slide! Sneaky slide! Woo! I mean, you just went past a tray with a tray. It's, <laughs> uh, I can get excited. Okay, that was beef goulash, green beans, peanut butter cake, enriched white bread and butter, and a glass of milk. And school children enjoyed this lunch in the 1960s. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I am closer. Right, you win this round, we're tied up again. Woo! Again, we've got a glass of milk. Very popular in the 60s. This is peanut butter and cottage cheese, I think. I've never had this. This has a dog food-like consistency. Is that ricotta oh. or cottage cheese? That's liver. Well, I ain't tasting that. Oh, but this is good. Ugh. Peanut butter and whatever that white mess is. Oh, that's liver. Mm. Oh, okay. gosh. Now, this is for the win, Rhett, or the lose. Because you went second last time, you have to go first this time. One of us is gonna eat a really great piece of pizza. The other one's gonna write a bunch of junk on a chalkboard. Okay, well, you've got the advantage here going in with the tie, but let's see what, see what I can do. Now, I know that liver indicates desperate times. Putting liver in something that should probably have a non-organ meat in it indicates desperate times. That's your opinion, man. This is in the 1910s or the 1930s. The problem is, is if I just put it right up there, you're just gonna knock me out of the way. I've got to do something even more strategic than that, Link. Which is? Are you kidding me? Did you do that on purpose? Yes. No, you didn't. I'm tempting you. What you gonna do? What you gonna do in my tray? You're thinking that Lincoln's gonna clink in your tray just because it's there and I can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> There's no way you can talk yourself out of it. Right. You have to make contact with that tray. What, what would be more fun, winning or just blasting the <laughs> crap out of your tray? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you, I know you well, my friend. Well, good buddy. I'm gonna do what I wanna do and I'm still gonna win. <laughs> I'm gonna do what you want me to do, what I wanna do, okay. and I'm still gonna all win. All right, okay, all right. I can't remember if the 1920s has already been an answer, but that's my guess. Great. <laughs> it has. Here we go. For the blast, all the kibosh, and the win. Ah! Oh! <laughs> That's my tray, right? Well, it's in the moat, but mine's <laughs> over against the wall, so you win, but boy, that was fun. <laughs> I'll write a bunch of crap on a chalkboard. You- Oh no, but what was the answer? Okay, so you just had a peanut butter, cottage cheese, and salad dressing sandwich with cream liver and potatoes and a glass of milk, which was served in schools in the 1930s. Good game, Link. Oh man, that was- that was worth writing was on a chalkboard. Totally board. worth it. I love when we do something that gets the views and I win. So you like our show then? Yes. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. You know what time it is. I'm Madison. I'm Jade. I'm Isaac. And, and we're, we're from, from Odessa, Odessa Texas, Texas. And it's time, time to spin the, the wheel of mythicality. There was a kid in the background snorting something. I'm just saying. <laughs> watch it back. Click the top link to watch me eat pizza while Link writes on a chalkboard in good mythical mode. 100 times. And to find out where the Wheel of Mythicality is gonna land. Wood grains and wood cookies and horses so small. Forest and farm collection for the fall.
Check out our debut apparel collection at mythical.store.